Good morning. Welcome to Holy Name of Jesus Cathedral and Mass for Easter Sunday. The worship aid can be found on the parish website, rallycathedral.org. The entrance hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Siku dixit resurrexit, alleluia, alleluia. He is risen as he has said. The great uh, anthem of the early church and the faith that the Lord has risen from the dead, the gift of the resurrection we today celebrate. A gracious welcome to all of our pilgrims joining our cathedral family this morning for this beautiful prayer and this Easter morning. I'm Monsignor Brockman. I serve as pastor here, joined together with Deacon Mike Alig. Uh, great to have you with us. And so as we pause and prepare, we do so in front of the great mercy that the Lord shows us today in the resurrection, in the reconciliation of our sins, as we acknowledge our sins and place ourselves before the power of God's mercy as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty King and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The song can be found in the Psalter on page 28. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord mercy and yours forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy and yours forever. hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be Storm which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in us. This is the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Victime Pascali laudes, Imolent Christiani, Agnus redemit obes, Christus innocent patri, Pe concilia vit, peccatores. Mos et vita duello, conflixere mirando, du vite mortus, regnat vivus. Dic nobis nob Maria, quid vidis ti in viam, sepulcrum Christi viventis, En gloria vidi resurgentis, angelicos testes, sudarium evestes, surexi Christus vis meam, precedem sus in Galiam. Scimus Christum surexit se, amotu is vere, tu nobis victor ex miserere. Amen. Alleluia. Pascalum has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon and Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a renewed welcome on behalf of our Cathedral Parish family to all of our pilgrims joining us for Mass this morning, especially all of those joining us via our live broadcast, which I think includes this morning uh, my two sisters. So they're watching from Chicago. So Pam and Cheryl, good to see you. I got a story about you coming up in the homily. They did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. So says St. John the Evangelist to us on this Easter morning, everybody. My sister, oldest sister Pam, were remembering uh, this week on an Easter past. Some of you have heard this story before, but it's a good one. And it's when we were kids. And I woke up early, just about when the sun came up, and... I find found tied to the doorknob of my room and that of each of my sisters a piece of string, each with our name on it and each which led down the hallway. And as I followed that string, a huge problem emerged for me in that where they all led, that's that length of twine, was to the door of the basement. Now the basement for me of course was a dark place and scary where someone, I think it was dad, convinced us that we shouldn't go. At least this seven-year-old at the time shouldn't because he'd get into things that he shouldn't be a part of. And so to make that point clear, I was told that there was down there living somebody so terrible who only came out in the dark, the boogeyman. No problem though, I heard, as long as the lights were on. And so my sisters now up as well, we all three came to the basement door and opening one reached up for the light switch on the left, but then a flash, the bulb burned out. So my sisters, ever generous, said to me, okay, you go first. (laughs) So with only the string to hold on to, going down to what I thought was certain death, sure enough, about three quarters of the way down, I heard sounds emerging from the darkness. But it wasn't who I thought. Instead, it was from where all those strings led to three cages, 
each containing a new white rabbit, and each chomping on a beautiful orange carrot. So I bounded back up the stairs with my prize, causing my sisters to race down for theirs, their string to guide, only to find it tied to an empty cage. Returning back up with hands on hips, all right, they said to me, what did you do with them? To which I gave them a wonderful brotherly Easter smile and said, I guess the boogeyman got him. <laughs> this morning, everybody, you and I, as in the gospel, are there at the top of the steps, remembering the disciples and the apostles there too, looking down as well into the darkness of the tomb. St. John the Evangelist recording their thoughts as they did, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. And so two pieces for us this morning, everybody, towards that understanding in the spiritual life that what, what happened there to Jesus is in fact truth. It's probably one of the more confounding things that you and I face in the spiritual life amongst our prayer, to trust God, because often, more often than not sometimes, Remember what it is that we hear from God more often than not. More often than not, it's silence. Silence when we're offering a prayer. Silence when we hear of barbaric things happening to others. Silence when life is unjust, when people die that we love when people who seemingly without a conscience can rape whole areas of life without consequence. All of us leaving us all not understanding how it is that we can ever trust God when there's silence like that. Interesting though, everybody, the message of this week that we now conclude this week what we've called holy, the message of this week, everybody, is the death and destruction in our world when we see it encountered with natural disasters and when we see it encountered with people without conscience feeding off life's sacred fire. We see that people suffer and die, just as Lazarus, Jesus' own friend, did and as Jesus himself did as we remembered on that Friday we strangely called good. The message is that God doesn't rescue us from life. What he does, in fact, is to invite us, to invite us to trust that he will bring life, that it'll all make, he'll make something wrong into something that's ever right, something that indeed is a tall order one that even the most heady can test as true, that in the end, with the power of the Lord's grace, love will triumph over hatred, peace over chaos, forgiveness over bitterness, hope over cynicism, fidelity over despair, virtue over sin, conscience over callousness, good over evil, and today, life, even over death. God will always be fashioning his grace towards making those realities happen, even if it takes years and even if it takes time and eternity to do so. He'll always strive to redeem us because he always strives to have the last word because it's true what we pray as Christians, that his mercy endures forever. So that's a first point in the spiritual life that you and I are invited to embrace towards that greater understanding 
of the mystery we today celebrate, to trust. Now a second piece, a second piece that builds on understanding and one that brings us all here this morning in our Easter finery, and that is the gift of faith. We're all, with all that we're finding that's happened in Ukraine, especially in Bukha, as we've heard about, and sadly other places too uh, throughout Ukraine, I was remembering this which I have in my pocket today and which I keep on my desk at the Catholic Center for my other job as Vicar General. It's a rock, of course, a pebble, but not just any, because it's from a place just outside of Munich, a nondescript town, but whose name is anything but. The name of that town is Dachau. And there, of course, it was that the very first of the concentration camps run by Nazi Germany began. And interestingly enough, where a far majority, about 100 percent, of all priests and religious who were arrested during those years were imprisoned. Almost 3,000. This rock coming from the gravel, now covering barracks number 26, where they all lived. At the end of that barracks, there was a chapel where the Nazis allowed mass to be celebrated. They thinking that those liturgies were of no consequence at all because they attributed them to hocus pocus. And so every day on their way there, those priests and religious and laity, they were by the soldiers mocked and kicked and spat upon. Some were snatched for medical experimentation and still others for some form of brutality, somewhat like we're hearing about in Ukraine. The rock, well, it was just that. Those folks never wavered because in and through the gift of faith, they knew that what they celebrated was not hocus pocus. Instead, they knew Jesus' words were true in the gift of faith. He's saying, for this is my body. And they also knew that receiving him, that they would have the strength to fight every evil, that they would have the strength to transform every hardship, that they would have the strength to take on every suffering and unite it to his own a reality we celebrated just the day before yesterday. In that gift of faith, they knew that because they had received his body into their own, and thus they knew they had the power of his life into their own. Everybody in history's day that sometimes can us to seem as if night, in a springtime of accomplishment, and wonder that seems sometimes in question because of the way human beings treat one another, seeming more like winter. In a world that seems more like that Friday we strangely call good, it is that gift of faith, everybody, that becomes the vocabulary where any darkness is flooded with the light of the resurrection, brightened by the Holy Eucharist, like it was by those priests and religious and laity in barracks number 26, and like it is today with the resilience of the Ukrainians, where the risen presence of Christ is always the fuel for goodness, the source of our generosity and love, and the power behind everything in life now unto life eternal. And so for us this morning, everybody, you bet what we celebrate is about the past, that God promised it and did it in Christ that first Easter. But it is also about the here and now, everybody, 
because the power of the resurrection is so awesome, it's so infinite, that for the Lord time is no obstacle. It's then ours to grow in trust and faith through God's grace that the Lord will always have the last word and that Christ will ever be our strength no matter what our weakness and how deep our darkness may be. And for us, everybody, what does all that reality do but make us always celebrating mourning in the church? Because only by the Lord could this all be done, as the psalmist said, and as we sang in Psalm 118. And so this morning, everybody, we only marvel at the reality that all of that is wonderful to our eyes. Great to have you with us for prayer this morning, and Happy Easter. And so as people of faith, let us stand together and let us pray what it is that we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. On this day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad as we pray to the God who raised Jesus from the dead. For the people of God, brought through saving waters to a land of promise, may we joyfully proclaim with our lips and our lives the good news of Christ's victory over sin and death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those newly baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, and for all who have been welcomed into full communion into the church, may they walk always with Christ in newness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or homebound, may the risen Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful of this cathedral gathered to eat and drink with our risen Lord, may we set our hearts on things that are above as we bear witness here on earth to the risen Christ and for Father Matthew as he joins our celebration from afar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of earth during this festival of Christ's resurrection, especially the people of Ukraine and Russia, may the gloom of malice and evil, through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, yield to a springtime of sincerity and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and whose lives are hidden with Christ in God, may they live forever with Christ 
in the glory of the resurrection, especially our parishioner, Carolyn Keller, who died this week, and for the parishioners and pilgrims to our cathedral, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, by his passion and cross, your Son bore our sins, and so hear our prayers, and grant that we may also share in his coming glory, as we pray in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, uh, together with our parish, Cathedral Parish family, welcome uh, to our parish and the life of our prayer. You're welcome to join us in the parish mission that is entrusted to us by the Lord that literally reaches out to thousands every week. Uh, and you can do that uh, online at raleighcathedral.org uh, or via the baskets the ushers are now uh, bringing forward. Uh, also, our second collection for today uh, is, as we always do on Christmas and Easter, uh, for our retired priests. Thank you so much for your generosity. It mirrors that generosity of the Lord to you and all of us. Thank you. The offertory hymn is, The Strife is Over.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. For by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Luis Raphael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Beautiful. Beautiful homily. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is, This is the Feast of Victory.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just a friendly reminder to get a copy of the Parish Bulletin as you go. You can obtain that from our ushers or uh, online at RaleighCathedral.org. Some important announcements there in my column, especially regarding Father Matthew, uh, so please make sure you refer to that. Uh, also, uh, coming up next weekend, next Saturday, uh, we're going to have an ordination to the transitional diaconate uh, right here at Holy Name. Bishop will be here for it. And it's going to be one of our own parishioners, uh, Nick Rapcook, uh, who's been in formation for the priesthood now for a number of years. Uh, so he'll be ordained uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. I strongly encourage you to join us for it. It's a wonderful wonderful celebration, not only for our parish, but of course the church throughout the world. Uh, so 10 o'clock this coming Saturday. Uh, we also have with us one, this morning another parishioner uh, who's one of our seminarians, uh, Daryl Johnston. Daryl's here. Daryl, great to have you with us today. Uh, and uh, continue prayers for Daryl and all of our seminarians. Um, and then uh, also um, coming up next weekend, the Divine Mercy celebration on Sunday afternoon. Uh, that'll be at 3 p.m. Uh, I know I join you in expressing great gratitude uh, to all of our liturgical ministers and all of those with our altar guild and every, uh, all who have done so much to help our Lent and our beginning of our uh, celebration of Easter to be so joyous. And of course, in particular, we thank uh, our musicians under the careful direction of uh, Dr. Micah Curso and also uh, Dr. David Eaton. So thanks to all. I know you join me in expressing that gratitude. We'll look forward to seeing you outside. And as you go, remember, you just received Holy Communion, so watch yourself in the parking lot, all right? <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you outside. And on behalf of all of our pastoral staff, Deacon Mike, and all of our staff, Happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. The recessional hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today. To the ushers as you exit the cathedral, thank you.